Welcome to CC, the classic car show. In this show, we meet a classic German with some very smooth lines. We take a look at an English roadster with some classic credibility inside and out. Also on the show, Great Scott, is that a time machine coming our way? A sleek sports car that may well be a classic of tomorrow. Plus, a big black beast from the USA with about as much chrome as you can get. So put down your remote control, slip on your driving gloves and relax for another episode of CC Classic Cars. this car. Does its purity of line and perfection of proportion take your breath away? That's what was written about this little coupe when it was shown in the 1957 Frankfurt Motor Show. And what car is it? The Volkswagen Carmen Gear. The Carmen Gear was a 2 plus 2 coupe built from 1955 to 1974. Marketed by Volkswagen, the Carmen Gear was built by coach builders Carmen, based on a Volkswagen Type 1 chassis, better known as the Volkswagen Beetle. It is basically a Volkswagen chassis, running gear and uh, engines with this rather sleek uh, 2 plus 2 GT body on it. And, um, that's where it gets the name Carmen Gear. It's from Wilhelm Carmen, uh, coach builders in Osnabrück and designed by Gear in Turin. There is some controversy as to who designed the distinct lines of this classic car. The initial design is said to have been penned by several contenders, including Virgil Exner, Mario Boano, and Luigi Segre from Carrozzeria Gear. But majority of opinion is in favour of Mario Boano, who worked for several Italian coach builders and bought Carrozzeria Gear in 1944. The most interesting thing about the Carmen Gear is, how was its amazingly organic shape crafted in such large numbers? Well, actually, a lot of work was done by hand. After the panels were moulded, they would be inspected for faults by cotton-gloved hands, and if there were any imperfections, they would be hand-rectified. Then, the panels were dipped into a zinc phosphate primer and wet-sanded by hand, creating an incredibly smooth glass-like surface. When perfect, the panels were sent to the cutting-edge dust-proof spray shop and received their first coat of paint. Then they were hand-sanded to perfection. The panels then received this paint process another three times. In 1962, the factory was able to mechanise some of the handcrafted methods, which increased production numbers. The Carmen Gear shared all of the mechanicals that the Beetle had and was essentially a reskin of the people's car. This makes it a great classic car for do-it-yourself enthusiasts. We bought it in September 2003 and um, it had been fitted with a much larger engine, a 1916cc twin carburetor engine uh, with an extractor exhaust system and the suspension had been lowered. Um, when we bought the car the uh, owner decided he wanted to keep the engine, gearbox and uh, exhaust system and so we basically bought the car and put in uh, the standard 1200cc 40 horsepower Volkswagen engine and gearbox and raised the car suspension to the correct factory specifications. All up, over 480,000 Carmen Gears were produced in Germany and Brazil, so finding a car isn't too hard. The biggest issue with these vehicles is usually the rust in the floor pan and body dents. As the car is so smooth and organic, even the smallest dent can be plainly obvious at the right angle. They are extremely reliable. Uh, I think it's because Volkswagen, um, the original concept was for a reliable, uh, cheap to run motor vehicle. The air-cooled engine, it, uh, it's very low revving really and um, provided you are aware of this and drive it accordingly, uh, it will just go and go and go. Um, they're not a racing car and if you treat them like that, uh, well then you will have problems. 
Sharing most of its mechanical parts with the Volkswagen Beetle means you won't have to search the globe for parts, as Beetles sold in the millions right across the world, and spares are available everywhere. A fashion car rather than a performance car, the Carmen Gear was a contemporary classic, attracting discerning buyers with an eye for style and beauty. The design remained relatively unchanged for a decade. The Type 1 Carmen Gear, which is this model, um, was built from uh, 1955 through to, I think I'm right, in 1976 or thereabouts. But then they developed another one, a Type 3 uh, Carmen Gear, which uh, had a slightly more radical design. It, it, it looked, if anything, um, a bit like a, an American Corvair, I think it was. It, uh, I don't think that sold as well as this one. Carmen gears are readily available in most countries and range in price from about 5,000 US dollars or about 3,000 pounds right up to 25,000 US or 15,000 pounds. The favourite part of uh, the Carmen gear that we own, I believe, are the front seats. They are just so comfortable on a long run, they're like armchairs. The Carmen, it's just a beautiful cruiser. The other favourite feature of mine with uh, this car is its gearbox. It's an absolute delight to use, it's so precise and so light. It just makes driving a joy. Here's a challenge for all you classic car fans. Now your chrome gives you a peek at some close-ups of classic chrome. Look at the shapes. Do you recognise the lines? Can you tell which car sports this shiny styling? It's too early for clues. But we can tell you it's a car, it's a classic, and it's very, very cool. Look closely, and we'll give you more hints later in the show. Next on CC. A classic car that's better known as a time machine. A sleek sports car that may well be a classic of tomorrow. And a rolling lounge room for the USA. This is a DMC 12 DeLorean. It was produced by the DeLorean Motor Company and was the only model to come from the car maker during its brief history. It was manufactured in Northern Ireland, but the vast majority of cars were exported to the US. Over its brief history, uh, 8,500 or a bit over 8,500 DeLoreans were made. The main year was in uh, 1981 where over 6,500 were made. Uh, and production was reduced because the car company ran into trouble in 1982. The car is best known for its role as a time machine in the 1985 blockbuster Back to the Future. Apparently it was chosen because the producers needed a car that looked like a spaceship for one of the early scenes. A stainless steel body and doors that opened upwards. A DeLorean was an obvious choice. Going back to the past for a moment, this particular car was manufactured in 1981. It's a four-speed manual and it's powered by a 2.85 litre motor, which is a combination of Peugeot, Volvo and Renault engines. With the DeLorean Motor Company having a chequered past, combined with the car's unique styling and a starring role in a major Hollywood movie, it's not surprising that many collectors snapped them up and stored them away. As a result, there are a lot of low mileage DeLoreans out there. The first owner of this car only put 100 miles on the clock between 1981, when it was manufactured, and 1985. The next owner added a further 700 miles before they sold it in 2008 to Nigel Elliott, a huge fan of everything 80s. I love the fact that the car is instantly recognisable. Everyone loves those doors that open, the stainless steel body, the fact that it's got such a wide stance, it looks real mean, especially from the back with those big fat tyres. This car is completely original down to the same tyres that rolled off the production line and Nigel plans to keep it that way as much as possible. 
To that end, the car has been put on permanent display at the local motor museum so everyone can enjoy it. In the movie Back to the Future, the DeLorean was capable of time travelling once it reached the speed of 88 miles per hour. Of course, we had to ask Nigel if he's tried this in his car. Everyone asked me about the flux capacitor and taking it up to 88 miles an hour. And in actual fact, on the speedo, it only goes up to 85 miles an hour. We've talked about Porsches being in a class of their own when it comes to classic cars. But it seems the German mark is going out of its way to create highly desirable and collectible vehicles of the future. This exquisite piece of machinery is the Porsche 911 Sport Classic, first shown at the Frankfurt Motor Show in 2009. The 911 Sport Classic is a limited production run Porsche exclusive, with just 250 of these classics of tomorrow hitting the roads. The 911 Sports Classic has several unique features setting it apart from the pack. Firstly, some styling enhancements, like the double dome roof, wider rear body and rear axle, and the distinct front spoiler stylings. The most noticeable feature is the fixed position rear spoiler, a nod to the classic ducktail of the 1973 Carrera RS. With a 3.8 litre direct fuel injected engine boasting 408 horsepower and 6 speed manual gearbox, the Sports Classic has plenty of power for the performance hungry buyer. Numerous other features inside and out ensure this car will definitely gain the coveted title of Classic Car and be a highly collectible one at that. Porsche 911 Sports Classic. With classic in its name, it had to be a classic of tomorrow. There was a time in American motoring history when bigger was better. Large road-hogging vehicles like the models from Chevrolet and Plymouth set a benchmark for luxurious motoring, while Europe was getting smaller and faster. This vehicle is a perfect example of a time gone by. This is a 1954 Packard Clipper Deluxe, a top-of-the-line luxurious chrome-laden monster with an impressive presence. Under the sizeable hood of the Clipper, is a straight eight side valve motor, one of the last side valve V8s used by Packard. The 1954 Packard Clipper Deluxe had some minor updates to differentiate it from the other Packards coming out of the factory. Unique tail lights and rear bumper trim were added and they were available in a unique two-tone paint option, although this limousine style beast is all black. Car collector Michael Finnis acquired this example purely by chance, as it wasn't a car he was looking for at the time. I had a company called Collectible Classics, and I was buying and selling classics and sports cars, and an old chap walked in one day and wanted to sell me the vehicle. He was retiring and wanted to get rid of it. As far as the value is concerned, I've been involved with valuing cars all my life. My father was a car dealer, I've always been involved, so uh, it's something that comes second nature to me. This is a right-hand drive version of the Clipper Deluxe, which makes it a little rarer than the average collectible. As far as desirable 50s US cars go, the 54 Clipper Deluxe is probably one of the most affordable. Good examples can be picked up in the USA for around 10,000 US dollars, or about 6,000 pounds. 
Cars needing attention can be bought for as little as 500 US, while right-hand drive vehicles in Europe, Australia and South Africa can fetch over 25,000 US or 15,000 pounds. So it looks great. It can be picked up for a reasonable price. But what's it like on the road? I'm not likely to drive it again. Uh, it's quite an enjoyable car to drive, but it's typical of American cars of that era, very soft in the suspension, and I drove it probably 100 k's here, and uh, I was almost seasick when I got here, but it's a, a typical yank tank, very floaty in the suspension. So how well did you go with your first peak? How well did you know your chrome? Here's a quick update. Did you guess it right away or are you still pondering? Take a look at these shots. We're showing you a little more of the car here so you should be able to pick it. The answer is coming soon. Next on CC, classic cars. A sports car with a very English background. And we reveal the Know Your Chrome mystery car. Some people have a knack for being in the right place at the right time and picking up a classic car that's been looked after from new. One of those people is Dennis Southern and his lucky find was this lovely red Jensen Healy Roadster. I was the third owner from new and uh, because it was such a low mileage, even uh, at five years of age, uh, I thought that was going to make a good buy for a car to keep for a long time. This wasn't just your average low mileage vehicle. Most cars travel up to 9,000 miles or 15,000 kilometres a year on average. So in 1979, at five years old, this Jensen Healey should have clocked up at least 40,000 miles or about 60,000 kilometres. They weren't uh, seen as very popular initially. Uh, uh, the first models that came out in 1973, they had a few uh, engine and transmission problems with them. But the 74 model that came out, which was a Series 2, they'd sorted that out fairly well. But unfortunately, the first model did not give them a good reputation. So they weren't as highly regarded as uh, what I believe they should have been. So this Jensen Healey was just like it had come off the showroom floor. And that's pretty much how it's been kept, with original paintwork and all original parts. With ever-increasing fuel costs and a hole left in the market due to the demise of the Austin Healey 3000, Jensen Motors decided to release a small car to appeal to a new demographic of car buyers, especially in the USA. Jensen Motors had built the bodies for the Austin Healey 3000, so management at Jensen worked with Donald Healey in the hope he could bring the same flair of design to the Jensen Healey that had made his 3000 so popular. From this partnership, the Jensen Healey was born and along with it, high hopes for the new sports cars from Jensen Motors. Some critics at the time compared it to the VW Porsche 914, the people's Porsche, Unfortunately, the Jensen Healey didn't sell anywhere near as well as its German rival. The car was more popular in the USA, as Jensen Motors had initially hoped, with over half the cars produced selling in the US market. This was followed by the UK, Australia and Japan. Generally speaking though, the Jensen Healey failed to capture the imagination of a car market that was flooded at the time with small two-seater sports cars from Europe, Japan and America. Yeah, they're not uh, very common. Uh, when they were made, they were only made 10,000 of them and they were sold worldwide. They're hard to keep in good condition. One of the characteristics of them is that their floor tends to rust out. Uh, so this one has got a, a floor that hasn't rusted as yet. So uh, that's one of the things you've got to watch out for them is the, uh, the rust that develops in them. And this one is rust free. When it came for the designers to choose a motor for the Jensen Healey, another English car legend was approached. 
Lotus Chief Colin Chapman and his team had just designed a new 1973cc 2 litre dual overhead cam 16 valve all alloy power plant for their future vehicles and a deal was struck to supply the engines to Jensen. This lightweight sports motor put up to 144 horsepower under the hood of the Jensen Healey, giving it a top speed of 119 miles per hour or 192 kilometers an hour. And the little convertible could accelerate from zero to 60 miles per hour in 8.7 seconds. Like any classic car, the Jensen Healey has had its fair share of issues. So when looking for a car of this kind, there are a few things to watch out for apart from the rust we mentioned earlier. If you're looking out for any particular problems that might arise from this model, you've got to keep an eye on the fact that the engine has been well maintained. They're not uh, cheap to repair, the Lotus motor with the twin overhead cams. Uh, mine has got the Delorto carbies. The later model had the uh, Strongberg carbies, uh, mainly because they had to change them to meet the pollution requirements of, uh, of that era. But generally speaking, uh, if you maintain it well and drive it accordingly, uh, they're fairly durable. For a small run car, parts for it are relatively easy to find. Apart from the Lotus motor, the gearbox is from a Hillman Hunter and the chassis is based on the Vauxhall Viva. Parts are available from quite a few sources around the world. And there is a strong group of collectors in the United States that have Jensen Healy's. So supply chains can be better there even with a reputation as a poor performer in terms of handling. The Jensen Healey still retains that sports car feel. A four-speed gearbox with a close ratio, driven by the Lotus power plant, gives the car vivid acceleration, whilst the front end disc brakes ensure you could slow down when needed. Dennis only takes his original condition Jensen Healy out once every month or two. He has entered some rallies, but he is keen to keep the mileage low. And it never ever goes out in the rain, as he wants to keep it as original as possible. It handles extremely well. I like to drive it through the hills nearby. Um, it brakes extremely well. It's got uh, quite an excellent acceleration. And generally speaking, sometimes if you catch up to another vehicle, you'll find that if he tries to shake you, it is rather difficult for you. So how well did you know your Chrome? If you said it was a 1960 Oldsmobile Dynamic 88, you'd be right. Built in the USA from 1950 to 1974, the Dynamic 88 was Oldsmobile's top-selling line of two-door coupes and four-door sedans. Considered a break from tradition, the 1960 Dynamic 88 models were sleeker and lower vehicles that did away with the high fins of the 50s. Classic cars are everywhere, from the much-loved family heirloom in the garage to the restored racer. One thing we all agree, there's nothing cooler than a classic. Like this unusual Alfa Romeo Junior Z with its unique styling or this stunning Jaguar XK120 Sports. As you know, you don't have to be an oil baron or an IT magnate to own a classic. You just have to love classic cars. Classic cars.